alcohol inks uh, are solvent-based ink, fast-drying ink, available in a bazillion colors now. No, really, we introduced 15 new colors in the alcohol world. And the, the great thing about these inks, I mean, they've been around since 2004 when I first launched them with Ranger. And you know, in addition to not only the palette evolving, because it started with the Adirondack palette, but also the maker, how people are using them. You know, we went from just doing simple card making to mixed media home decor, and now all of these great paintings and effects that people are doing. And so when we started talking about creating new colors for the line, I really kept that in mind. How are people using them today? How is today's maker using them? Well, a lot of artists are using 91% isopropyl alcohol or higher to actually dilute the color and pour it onto Yupo or different substrates to get those colors to blend. When you add isopropyl alcohol to alcohol ink, you are diluting the color, okay? You're not totally washing it out, but you're definitely diluting the color. And so with that, these 15 colors, we wanted to create really intense punches of color, the most vibrant color we put in the line. So I'll go through the swatches. I won't necessarily go through all 15 colors because there's a lot of swatches to go through. But there is a swatch board on the other side. I encourage you to take a photo of it. But just fanning through the swatch, you can see right away when there is a new color because that really bold color, that's a new color. For example, that's Gumball. Or when you go through the line, Cranberry used to be our deepest red. Now we have Rosewood, which is like really intense. You get into yellows. We've added interesting colors like Dijon, which is kind of like yellow, kind of meets green, not olive -y, but when in the world of alcohol ink, when you use it with something, you can either have a yellow property or a green property. You get into greens, we have really bright greens like Mojito, or really dark greens like Everglade. And that's what we wanted to keep in mind, even, I know, <laughs> see the whole little mermaid thing over there, yeah, yeah. We added Laguna because we wanted that color. We also added some great blues like Glacier, and, and that was the inspiration, is how is today's maker? It doesn't mean you can't use them on cards like you've always done. It just means that the colors you're going to get are really going to be deep, vibrant, rich colors in, in your make. Now, in addition to the colors, we've also introduced what's called an alcohol alloy. Now, there's five colors. I only have four left. I don't know what the other one is. But the alcohol alloy is a different kind of metallic, right? When we first launched metallics in the alcohol ink line, we launched mixatives. And mixatives are a metallic pigment in a solvent base designed to mix with the alcohol ink when you use it. It creates really great effects. I don't know if you can see that on the Yupo, but it's like a polished stone effect, right? It's designed to mix in with the ink and create these little veins of metallic. The alloy is a totally different kind of metallic. It is a leafing metallic that we use. It still has a solvent, but when you put it onto the surface, it's designed to clump. So instead of mixing with the ink, it's designed to like stay together and create a whole different effect of metallic over your background. So even on something like this is tile, it looks like there's leafing in there, but that is the alloy. That's the ink that does that. It creates these chunks, these fragments of metallic that go onto the surface. So any of these elements of metallic that you see, those are the alloys now. So the alloys are unique because in addition to spreading out the way we want a metallic to do, it'll just start grouping up in really cool areas. So I'm gonna demo how, how that's to be used. So, well, that's the, it's a million dollar question. In okay, my opinion, as makers, I kind of feel like we're going to be done with this. Because I just know as a designer, I'm over that. Like, you know what I mean? If that's all we had, okay, that's what we had. But because we have such a much better metallic, I can still get it to blend if I dilute it. But the fact that this is so much more intense than that. So Ranger's why, just going to watch this yeah, why would I? So, I mean, I said to Ranger, I'm like, guys, if you want to be done with mixatives, like, it's okay. We, like, we have yeah, something else now. I think, yeah, we've kind of moved on. We, you found a different kind of metallic. You found a different resin. Let's go. So, I, I hope that they do that because I do feel that if, it, if it's something better, like, let's just focus our energy on that and try to, instead of trying to show the difference. Okay. But it is visually different. I mean, when you see it, you're like, okay, why would I need that? But some people might still want subtle. I know painters that do it, they like that little subtle fleck. I'm for alloys all the way. In addition to that, there's different substrates, and I've worked on a lot of substrates. Yupo, of course, is my favorite. It's a synthetic paper, it's a plastic paper. We have it in white, we have it in translucent, we have it in heavy stock. The nice thing about this, it's very forgiving substrate. You can use it, it floats color completely different than gloss paper does. 
We also have uh, these hardcore art panels. This is a, an MDF wood that is laminated with vinyl on both sides. It makes great little art pieces. We have them in squares and rectangles. In this show, we launched these wonderful hexagons. So you can use them to stamp on. You can add color in the background. You could add resin. We have a new alcohol <laughs> resin kit that just allows you to combine equal parts of this, mix it up, pour it over the top, self-leveling, 24 hours, you have a hard resin surface. And it doesn't affect the alcohol because it doesn't smear them, it doesn't alter the color. I know, isn't that nice? It looks like glass. It's really beautiful. Uh, in fact, the resin, I'm gonna steal mine. So we have this designer spotlight thing for Rage. We do it every year where you have to make something. And I needed to make something for distress and for alcohol. Now for distress, I had to make a project and mine has more colors than anything. You'd be proud of it. I, I saw it. I already took pictures. I used 64 <laughs> colors of it. And here's why, right? So we had to choose, each designer got to choose five makers, just at random, of people that had a certain style, an identifiable style. So I'm like, okay, I'll pick Stacy, she's going to do color. Paula, she'll do soft and vintage. Emma will be floral. I knew Zoe was going to be grungy, and I knew McGuire, Jennifer McGuire, was going to be color. Okay? Paula, brown. Stacy, brown. Emma, brown. Zoe, brown. And I'm like, Wait a minute, I'm the brown guy, like everyone else is supposed to be a different color, so I thought, well, now I need to just pull out all the stuff, so I did all the colors. So when it came to alcohol ink, I thought, well, I'm not really a painter, I'm not an alcohol ink painter person. So I took one of the hardcore panels, put inks on there, put alloys on there, moved them around, which I'll talk about the blower, got all those colors, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting, I wonder how this resin's gonna work, because Ranger said, we're adding this resin to your line, this alcohol resin, I'm like, I've never really worked with resin. I don't know what it does, and people are gonna say, how does it work with this? I have no idea. So I took the scrap, I went in and did alcohol lifting. I went and did lifting with the stencil. I took archival, I stamped it once, twice, three times, three generations. I did some rub-ons, and then I'm like, okay, I splattered it to see if the resin would make this ink run. Then when I was done, I let it dry. I poured the resin, I'll show you the resin. This is the resin. So the clear resin kit comes with two bottles, A and B. And all you do is you take equal parts in a cup, mix it up, five minutes, pour it over the top, self levels, you can pop the bubbles with a heat tool or a torch. All right, so if you have a butane torch, you can do that, or use a heat tool to get the bubbles to pop. 24 hours, that's it. So this entire piece is done with one cup of this, which I thought was, I thought I would have to pour several of it. You pour it on, take the spatula, and pull it to the edge. But I just did this as a test piece to see like how, how would the resin work? Would the resin eat the rub-ons? Would the resin smear archival? Would the lifting disappear? And when I was done the next day and I came to look at my sample, I'm like, my project's done. <laughs> so this was never even a project, but Dina's like, your composition is amazing. You're this, I'm like, thank you. That was to totally self-leveling. I literally, all you have to do on resin is get it to its edge because it won't overtake a dry area, is what I found. Like, if you, if you spread around but you left a pocket, I would assume that the resin would kind of pull in. If you had a lot of resin, it might, but it really doesn't. It just kind of sits where it is. So I just pulled it to the end. She's doing some dancing back there. She's okay. She's yeah. the FTV course. She yeah. says she demos an interpretive dance. And like, <laughs> so I pulled this to the edge, and then, yeah, it's self-leveled, and, like, that was it. So that's one layer of resin, which is awesome. So I love the fact. Thanks. So I love the fact that we can put it on there. And I am not knowing resin, I'm like, how much do I have to make? Like, how much do you gotta pour on there? And literally one cup did the whole thing. So you can resin over wood, or papers, or fabric, metals, anything like that. It's pretty awesome. So, that is my resin piece. So we're gonna do some demos using the inks, the alloys, and this silly little tool. The blower is just a soft rubber ball, has these little ridges so it just doesn't roll off the table, and an air opening. Now, I'll use it, I'll pass it around because everyone wants to squeeze it. It is a very soft rubber ball, okay? It's very soft because we want to push this ink around with air. And the reason I did it is, again, there's different ways that we can apply alcohol ink. We can use an ink tool, we can use a paintbrush, we can do a lot of different things, but an air blower is going to allow us to create a more organic movement of our inks. Another thing to keep in mind, especially if you watch a lot of YouTube, I see people moving alcohol ink with a straw, and that is really unsafe because if you blow inks around, if you're really good about like exhaling and then lifting your head up and actually breathing upright, you're good. But most people are down here blowing the inks and then inhaling air, and if you suck the fumes right off the surface, they are very toxic to you, all right? If you just use alcohol ink and you smell it, well, that's a bonus. That's like, woo, this is so much fun. But other than that, you shouldn't be inhaling alcohol ink off the surface. 
So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with a piece of UPO. It could be a full sheet or part of a sheet. And I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol. Okay, this is 91%, so 91 or higher. And I'm going to work on the medium mat, so I'm going to get rid of the craft mat. because so I don't want to use alcohol ink with this. And then I'm just going to set up my colors. And I like to use the grid on here. It's kind of like a palette because I'm able to match up my caps later. I'm one of those people that I like the cap to match the bottle so I don't contaminate the different colors on there. That's just me. I'm just going to add, ooh, monsoon. That's a good, good color. I'll probably end up with all of them. You never know. But here's what's unique. When I go and shake the color into this alcohol, see how the color reacts different on Yupo than it does sitting in this isopropyl. The isopropyl alcohol actually suspends the alcohol in different layers. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So let's just throw on a few colors to start. And we're gonna take that air blow and we're gonna just start moving those colors around, okay? And when I move those around, you're gonna see all of those layers underneath. You're gonna see that pink is still under there. You're gonna see that blue under there. You're gonna see that teal under there because that alcohol keeps all those colors separate and it's allowing me to move around. I'm basically just painting with air. If you wanna use the alloy, the alloys are really intense. This is a leafing metallic. So when I go and place this down, one drop is going to cover a very large area, all right? Now you can use the alloys with alcohol ink or with blending solution, but you need to use them with one of the two because these contain resin and isopropyl alcohol doesn't. So if you only use them with this, even though they'll dry, the metallic will rub off. But if you use even just a drop of blending solution, that's gonna be enough to set those metallics. And you'll see that the alloy is really, really intense. They have such a rich metallic property. I'm just gonna go in and just add your alcohol. Yeah, it's really wild how these colors can move. And this blower is just allowing me, again, just to paint with air. See how I can break that up? So your alloys, you can see how, as you add them, they always want to kind of go back to the party. They just want to gather together, but this blower is going to allow me just to mix and break that up. And you don't, you can see that when I'm using it, I'm just applying a little bit of air to get that movement. I don't have to go in and just, like we're not doing that, unless you want fireworks, I suppose, on your background. But this gives you so much more control because the isopropyl alcohol takes longer to dry. If you only did this with ink and blending solution, you are not gonna get this play. Because blending solution has the same drying time of these inks, which is about seven to 10 seconds. So by the time you did a little bit of movement, it's over. Now, when you're mixing it, you can always go back and throw in colors. The alcohol inks will always react with each other. So adding any color, any solvent, it's just going to go in and just give you a whole new play, a whole new float of color on there. And those alloys will always stay together. So even though I introduce a new color, I can create a whole different layer and bring some of that paint back in. I love how I can pull color just with air instead of a brush. It's such a cool way that we can go in and add some color. So I'm gonna let this sit and just do its thing. If you give alcohol inks a chance to dry on their own, you're gonna get these interesting undertones that show up from the color versus drying it with a heat tool. Can you dry with a heat tool? Sure. If you wanna add another effect, we can also take alcohol and spray it. So you can take a mini mister and you can put isopropyl alcohol and you can spray it. What you should never spray is this. This has resin, so this should never be airborne in a liquid form. If you happen to spray this, there again, that would be bad for you, it's toxic. Do I have anything? I have a little bit in there. By spraying this kind of alcohol, you'll see on the background, I can create some really neat splatters just right into my alcohol. I can let it set. The longer it sets, like if I go in and just use the blower right here, I can get these pieces to actually look more like little sponge drops versus dots. So I was able to push that ink kind of back together. It creates a cool, cool pattern. So I'm gonna just let that do its thing, and I'll show you it's another like trick. An owl. It's just, oh, it's just like an owl. I just love the look of that. I love the look of that metallic and all of those colors on there. But we'll talk about these rainbow, whatever. I found mine at the dollar store because I had no idea. So this, just take a protractor, take a piece of Velcro, put it on the edge, take a piece of felt, put it over this, and this can be used for alcohol ink, distress, watercolor. It's just a quick way that we can go in and apply. Now, this is just felt from the craft store, nothing special about it. And then you just fold it over the Velcro, and then you kind of have to like squeeze it into the little hooks. 
this was just neat because it's a cool way to apply a blend of colors. So although I'm going to show you kind of the rainbow, you could do this like with blues to create a bluish background or different earth tones, anything you want. So here we'll take this, we're going to add our ink colors. So I'll still take some different pinks, a little gumball, a little fiesta, then I'm going to go in with some yellow, and I'll just do that, that rainbow spectrum. There's a little Dijon. Let's take some mojito. Why not? Use a little Laguna. And all I'm doing is I'm just putting the nib on and I am squeezing some of that color. Use a little glacier. And you can go all the way to the end of the felt if you wanted to. I'm just gonna do just a short little rainbow here. And I'm going to take this, just a piece of Yupo, and I'm just gonna start swiping color, right? Quick way to blend. If I wanted to, I know, right? Seriously, I had that same reaction that we had. <laughs> I saw it and I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I mean, I didn't say freaking, I said something else. But I was just so, you know, it's one of those things that it just kind of stings you because you're like, that's so duh, but so brilliant. And I loved it. So like on Sparkle, I can go in and just add this color and I can blend this out. And when you put it on Sparkle, of course, that paper, as soon as the solvent hits, it's gonna lose its sparkle, but once it dries, the sparkle comes back. So I can even take a heat tool, and as I dry it, and that alcohol evaporates, you're gonna see it goes right back to a beautiful, sparkly paper, right? So we have that colored, glittery paper. If you want something that's a little bit more distressed, right, this kind of look, all I did was do this swipe, take my alcohol, and just go in and spray that top and just let it drip. That's it. And just let it pull through that color. I'll show you over there too, look at that. Yeah, that is good right there. And you're just letting that alcohol drip through. I know, isn't that crazy? I know, and you don't have to go against grain, you can go with it if you want. I think we even did some drips over there. And then once you're happy with it, we can dry it. Now, isopropyl alcohol, thanks. Dries really quick, so you'll see when the heat hits it, just that alcohol evaporates. You do not have to heat this. You can let it air dry. I'm just very impatient when I demo, or in life. Um, but you can even see that. If you wanted this color to just fade out, at any time you can go back and you can spray on more alcohol and that thing will fade out. But that's the, that's the effect that we can get. And that's how this is done on Sparkle. It's done the same way on a hardcore panel. So it's that same idea. I just went in, swiped the color, sprayed alcohol, let it drip. The only thing I did different between these two, I added resin. So it's really crazy how you can change the effects of all these. This one, same idea. This just happens to be stamp lifting, right? Because when we stamp lifting, we can lift off and create some background.